at night on a silent runway, a Boeing 747, wings glittering with frost, leans back, engines roaring louder than thunder. But tonight, it is not taking tourists to Tokyo. Tonight, it tilts toward the stars, riding a column of fire straight for orbit. Imagine the world's most familiar jumbo jet reborn as a spacecraft. This isn't pure fantasy. NASA once bolted whole space shuttles onto a pair of modified 747s and flew them cross-country like cosmic piggybacks. And in the 1970s, the US Air Force quietly asked Boeing whether a 747 could launch, refuel, and even recover tiny fighter jets in mid-air, a flying aircraft carrier plan most people have never heard about. Stay with us to uncover these hidden chapters, the shuttle ferry missions, the parasite fighter schemes, and the wild blueprints for turning a metal behemoth into a reusable space plane. We'll weigh the engineering, the economics, and the alternate timeline where airports become spaceports, and the 747 becomes humanity's everyday ticket to low Earth orbit. This is Airplane Curious, your window into the what-ifs that almost changed our world. If you love untold stories and daring possibilities, hit subscribe now and journey with us all the way to the final countdown. The story of the Boeing 747 didn't begin with dreams of luxury flights or international travel. It began with war. In the early 1960s, the US Air Force launched a competition. They wanted a massive military transport plane, one that could haul troops, tanks, and supplies across continents. Boeing entered the race with a bold design, but they lost. The contract went to Lockheed's C-5 Galaxy, a high-wing giant with a nose that could open for cargo. Boeing's loss, though, turned into aviation history's greatest pivot. With all that engineering knowledge already in hand, Boeing decided to take a risk. They would build a commercial version of their military plane, something the world had never seen before, a true jumbo jet. At the time, air travel was still a luxury for the wealthy. Planes were cramped, noisy, and needed to refuel for long trips. Boeing wanted to change that. The result was the 747, a wide-body jet with two aisles instead of one, a distinctive upper deck hump, and engines powerful enough to carry hundreds of passengers across oceans nonstop. The 747 wasn't just big, it was revolutionary. It used high-bypass turbofan engines, new technology then, which gave it better fuel efficiency and range. The partial second deck wasn't just stylish, it originally housed a lounge, adding a sense of space and comfort unheard of in commercial planes. The world took notice. When the 747 debuted in 1970 with Pan Am, it captured the imagination of millions. Airports had to build new gates and longer runways just to handle it. Airlines scrambled to add the queen of the skies to their fleets. Suddenly, flying across the Atlantic wasn't just for business elites, it was something ordinary families could now afford. In building a plane meant for military use, Boeing accidentally built the aircraft that would change how the world traveled. But behind its smooth commercial debut, the 747's bones were still those of a heavy-lifting, long-range beast qualities that later made it ideal for roles far beyond passenger service. The Boeing 747 never launched a space shuttle, but it sure helped them land. In the 1970s, NASA needed a way to transport the massive winged space shuttle from its desert landing zones back to Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Rockets could launch the shuttle, but nothing could fly it back home until engineers turned to a surprising solution, a modified Boeing 747. NASA selected two 747-100 aircraft and heavily altered them, creating what became known as the Shuttle Carrier Aircraft, or SCAs. These weren't just passenger planes with the seats stripped out. The airframes were reinforced, vertical stabilizers were added to the tail for balance, and a special mounting system was installed on top to hold the 165,000-pound shuttle like a space-age backpack. The most famous of these aircraft was NASA 905, which carried the shuttle prototype Enterprise during a series of dramatic test flights. In one of the most unforgettable moments in aviation history, the 747 soared high into the sky with Enterprise strapped to its back, only to release it mid-air. The shuttle glided silently down to the desert floor, proving that it could fly and land without engines. These test missions weren't just symbolic. They demonstrated that a commercial aircraft, 
originally designed for long-haul passenger flights, could be adapted for space operations. Engineers had taken the 747's incredible lifting power and turned it into a mobile spaceport. It couldn't break through the atmosphere, but it brought spacecraft to life, literally carrying spacecraft on its back. What's more, this bold reuse of an airliner blurred the line between earthbound aviation and space travel. It showed that the gap between runways and orbit might not be as wide as it once seemed. In the early 1970s, as the Cold War simmered and military innovation pushed boundaries, the US Air Force and Boeing quietly explored one of the boldest ideas of the jet age, turning the 747 into an airborne aircraft carrier. The concept was wild, even by Cold War standards. Instead of sailing massive carriers across oceans, what if the US military could fly one through the sky? The 747, already the largest commercial airliner in the world, seemed like the perfect candidate. It had the space, the payload capacity, and the range to host and deploy an entire fleet of miniature fighter jets, also called parasite fighters. In studies, the idea was to modify a 747's interior to hold up to 10 small jet fighters. These aircraft would be stored within the fuselage and launched through a specially designed ramp or door system. In midair, these fighters could deploy, engage enemies, return, refuel, rearm, and then be recovered, just like on a naval carrier, but thousands of feet above the ground. The fighters themselves would be light, compact, and built for quick missions. Engineers envisioned robotic arms or mechanical docking systems that would reach out to catch the jets as they returned to the mothership. Inside, maintenance crews would rapidly service them for another sortie. The airborne carrier would essentially patrol the skies as a self-sufficient war platform, staying in the air longer than any sea-based carrier could float. But turning that vision into reality was a different story. The engineering challenges were enormous. Mid-air recovery was incredibly risky and nearly impossible to automate with the tech of that time. Maneuvering jets into a moving 747 at high speed was like trying to land a fighter inside a flying garage, while the garage itself was dodging turbulence at 30,000 feet. There were also issues of structural integrity and aerodynamics. Modifying the 747 to open and close large hatches while airborne raised concerns about the airframe's stability. Weight was another problem. Adding mechanisms for launch, recovery, and storage dramatically reduced fuel capacity and range. And then came the cost. Developing a reliable airborne carrier system would have required billions in R&D, plus years of testing. In the end, military focus shifted. Satellite surveillance, long-range missiles, and stealth bombers became more practical. The 747's potential as a flying fortress faded into the pages of forgotten proposals, an ambitious dream grounded by reality. Turning a Boeing 747 into a spacecraft sounds thrilling, but the reality is packed with engineering nightmares. The first hurdle, weight and materials. The 747 is made mostly of aluminum, a strong but relatively heavy metal. It's great for airliners, but useless for re-entering Earth's atmosphere at thousands of degrees. Space planes need advanced heat-resistant materials, like reinforced carbon-carbon or titanium alloys, the same kind used on the space shuttle's nose cone. Without thermal shielding, the 747 would simply burn up on re-entry. Next, there's the question of propulsion. The 747 relies on jet engines that breathe air, meaning they work only within Earth's atmosphere. But rockets don't need air. They carry their own oxidizer and can operate in a vacuum. If the 747 were redesigned for space, it would need either rocket engines or a hybrid propulsion system. That means major structural changes, internal tanks for fuel, and a complete redesign of the wings to manage the different thrust dynamics. It's not just swapping out engines, it's rewriting the plane's entire DNA. Then comes aerodynamics and thermal loads. The 747 is built for smooth, subsonic flight. Its wide wings and large body are designed to glide through air with minimal turbulence, but space planes re-enter the atmosphere at Mach 25, slamming into air molecules like a meteor. The shape of the aircraft must be sleek, heat deflecting, and able to maintain stability under extreme G-forces. The 747's design, as elegant as it is for commercial use, simply isn't made for that kind of punishment. 
And then there's the big question, is it worth it? Turning the 747 into a space plane would be a massive investment. Developing new materials, propulsion systems, and safety features could cost billions. All this for a vehicle far larger and heavier than it needs to be. Rockets, although expensive, are optimized for space. Smaller space planes, like the X-370B, can do the job with far less fuel, complexity, and risk. So while the idea of a 747 space plane sparks imagination, the technical and financial hurdles make it a near impossible dream, even for the most daring engineers. When we talk about the Boeing 747, most people think of luxury travel, long haul flights, and crowded international airports. But quietly, the 747 played a critical support role in the early space age, one that most people never noticed. NASA turned two specially modified 747s into shuttle carriers. These giant aircraft didn't just haul the retired space shuttle across states, they helped test glide dynamics during early orbital development. In essence, the 747 was the winged workhorse behind America's push into space, just not in the way you expect. This role alone made the 747 more than just a commercial airliner. It became a bridge between the ground and the stars. Its size, strength, and range gave engineers confidence in its ability to carry large, sensitive, and mission-critical space hardware. It was reliable, proven, and adaptable, exactly what space programs needed during their fragile early years. But what if Boeing had gone further? Imagine this, a Boeing 747 re-engineered not just to carry space vehicles, but to become one, a true space-capable version. It could have been a partially reusable space plane, launched vertically or horizontally, returning to land on standard runways. The payload capacity would have been far beyond the small capsules used in the 60s and 70s. Cargo, satellites, scientific equipment, possibly even small space station modules could have been flown up and returned safely in a single mission. The benefits for NASA and international space agencies would have been massive. Commercially, the implications are even staggering. Picture a future where the Boeing 747 doesn't just take you from New York to Tokyo, but from Houston to low Earth orbit. Airport to orbit travel would reshape how we think about both flight and space exploration. Hotels in orbit? Supply lines for lunar bases? If a vehicle is familiar as the 747 entered space service, public trust in space travel might have skyrocketed. Space wouldn't feel so distant, it would feel domestic. The advantages go beyond comfort and familiarity. The 747 had room. Its interior could be modified to support large equipment, personnel cabins, or even modular research labs. The ability to land on traditional runways would simplify recovery and repairs, cutting down on the ocean splashdowns and desert retrievals that made early space missions risky and expensive. Infrastructure already existed, Hangars, refueling stations, maintenance crews, they were all in place, worldwide. But it wouldn't come without serious drawbacks. To start, there's the issue of weight. The 747 was a heavyweight champion in the skies, but space travel is brutally unforgiving. Every kilogram counts. To make the 747 orbital, Boeing would have had to redesign its structure with advanced materials, likely replacing much of its aluminum frame with composite alloys. That alone could cost billions. Then there's the engine dilemma. Jet engines work great in the atmosphere, but space? They're useless. The 747 would need rocket propulsion, possibly a hybrid system or detachable booster platforms. The complexity of merging two completely different flight systems, subsonic cruising and orbital velocity, presents engineering challenges that even today's aerospace leaders struggle with. Thermal protection is another nightmare. Re-entry temperatures are unforgiving. The space shuttle used thousands of heat-resistant tiles that had to be replaced constantly. Covering a massive 747 in similar shielding would require a miracle in both cost and maintenance efficiency. And finally, there's the matter of risk. An orbital 747 wouldn't just carry cargo, it would likely carry people. Any design failure, no matter how small, could be catastrophic. The bigger the vehicle, the more parts there are to go wrong. And in space, failure isn't just costly, it's fatal. Yet the what if remains tantalizing. 
Boeing had the industrial capacity, the government contracts, and the vision. The 747 had the wingspan, the legacy, and the power. All the pieces were on the table. If just a few decisions had gone another way, we might be living in a world where space travel feels more like boarding a flight than launching a rocket. The Boeing 747 has always stood as a symbol of human ambition, massive, powerful, and ahead of its time. In this video, we explored a bold alternate history, one where the queen of the skies wasn't just crossing continents, but crossing into space. The concept is thrilling, a familiar aircraft reimagined as a space plane, launching payloads and people into orbit. Its sheer size, trusted design, and global infrastructure could have rewritten the way we think about space travel. But for every bold idea, there are heavy barriers. Engineering a 747 to survive re-entry, carry rocket propulsion, and function in the vacuum of space would demand massive redesigns, mind-bending budgets, and the willingness to take unimaginable risks. The cost could be staggering, the complexity overwhelming. And yet, the idea refuses to die. So we leave you with this. What if Boeing had taken leap into space? Would the 737 be orbiting above us now, silently circling the Earth as a flying monument to what could have been? Thanks for watching Airplane Curious, where we uncover the hidden paths history almost took. If you enjoyed this journey, give the video a like and subscribe for more untold tales and what-if wonders from the past.